Hello and welcome. My name is Thomas Gottron and I'm going to talk about sampling and smoothing for approximating distributions over linked open data. But what do I mean when I'm talking about distributions over linked data? Well, actually I'm interested in certain patterns that you can observe in the data and I want to know how probable are these patterns to observe. So what could be a pattern? A pattern can simply be the predicates. So if I pick a random triple out of the linked data cloud, I would like to know how probable is it to this, this um, triple is using four nodes as a predicate. In the same way, I could be interested in the RDF class types. So I would like to know if I am picking out one statement that is assigning an RDF class to an instance, how likely is that going to be a fourth person? Now, while predicates and class types are still relatively simple patterns, you can actually combine them to make more complex patterns. For example, if you combine the predicates, you end up with so-called property sets. And here you might want to know if I pick a random node in the RDF graph that is composed by the linked data cloud, how likely is that going to be modeled using exactly the properties shock follows, both nodes, and RDFS label? Or if I transfer that to the class types, how likely is it to be of type DBpedia actor and folk person? And the last thing that I'm going to actually address even in that paper as a pattern, or there are many more, the last thing is the so-called extended characteristic sets, for short ECS. And these ECS, they are actually just a combination of properties and RDF class types, and in which combination they are used to model entities on the linked data cloud. When I'm looking at these probabilities, what I'm doing effectively is I'm estimating a distribution over these patterns on the linked data cloud. So I take all the data that is out there and I take a look which patterns are there and how probable are there to appear in the data. There are several applications that need such information. For example, if you're doing query federation over the linked data cloud, you might want to know how big is the size of an intermediate result set. Because this size might allow you to optimize the order in which you perform joins and at which time you're querying which data source. Further applications that use such statistics come from the field of data mining or schema inferencing. Anyway, the linked data cloud is growing and growing. So it is becoming less and less feasible to use the entire linked data cloud for such a process. So a solution could be to just operate on a sample. Just take a fragment of the linked data cloud and estimate the distributions on this fragment. Now this will very likely just be an approximation of the true distribution. And the question is, how good are these approximations? Now there are two things that you can influence actually when you're working with these samples. And this is exactly the two things that I'm taking a look at in this paper. One is the question, how do I perform sampling? And the second thing is, well, how do I deal with unobserved events? Because what can happen is, if I'm taking just a fragment of the linked data cloud, I might not have observed all the patterns that are out there. I might have missed some predicates or some combinations of RDF class types. And still I want to assign them some probability. So, Let's start first by taking a look at how you can do sampling on the linked data cloud. Uh, when I think of the linked data cloud, I like to think of it in a suitable data format and how to represent it, and that is actually the nQuads format. An nQuad is a quadruple consisting of subject, predicate, object, and context. Well, obviously, subject, predicate, object is just the triple, the RDF triple, so this is basically giving you the information itself that is modeled on the linked data cloud. And the context is telling you where does it come from. It's giving you an idea about the provenance. So the URI, the data source that has actually published this information. With this representation of the data, you can quickly come up with three sampling strategies. The first one is using all the triple statements. And you're sampling from all the triple statements that have been made on the linked data cloud. If you think of this as an RDF data graph, you would actually perform an edge-based sampling. The alternative is to use a node-based sampling. So in this case, we would be looking at the subjects that you have in the triple statements. Each subject corresponds to a node in the graph. And 
you are just randomly picking a subset of these nodes and then attached all the uh, edges that you have around them. And the last things that you can do is you can do sampling based on the context, on the data sources. You're just picking a certain ratio, a fragment of all the data sources publishing data on the linked data cloud and you're using all the data that is provided by them and this is providing you with a sample that you can use to estimate distributions. In all the things that I have taken a look at for this paper, I'm always assuming uh, an unbiased sampling based on a uniform distribution. So for example, when I'm dealing with context, I'm picking each context, each data source equally likely in my sample, independent of its size or importance or page rank. Okay, now, if we know how sampling works, let's take a look how we can get distributions over the data and how we can actually smooth these distributions. The approach that I am taking to come up with a distribution is reusing some index models which I have developed uh, for other purposes. And these index models, they are doing nothing else but actually taking a data set, or in our case, a sample of the linked data cloud, analyzing which patterns there are in this data, and they're assigning to these patterns all the data instances which actually have exhibited this pattern. And the thing is that now I have my patterns, the set K, and these are all the observations that I have made, and they are in the index, and now I can use a sigma selection function to look up all the data items that actually have shown and exhibited this pattern. The advantage of using indexes now is I can very quickly con uh, construct a distribution over the data and the patterns. Because what I can do is I can simply count how many items did I find for which pattern. So the length of these lists that I have just shown you. Well, and if I know all the list of all the lengths, I can also sum them up and this tells me how many observations, how many data items did I have in total. And with this total number now I can use relative frequencies and they will give me an estimate of the distribution of my patterns. Now I could work with these distributions. The problem is, and I have already mentioned that before, is I will have to deal with unobserved patterns. So as mentioned, the missed predicate that I have just not seen in my sample, but that is used out there in the lake data cloud, or the combination of RDF class types. So what will happen here is, if now I am actually trying to use this distribution, let's say for uh, query federation, and you want to know how likely it is to observe a particular pattern on the linked data cloud, but you have not seen this pattern in your sample, you will have a frequency of zero for that pattern in your index. And if you're just using the distribution and the, the, the relative frequency as a probability, you will end up with a probability of zero. And now many, many approaches, including also uh, query federation, or the data mining approaches, or schema inferencing, they will really have trouble to work reliable or to give you good results if you provide them with zero probability. So you really would like to avoid them. Smoothing is exactly the approach to overcome these zero probabilities by taking away some probability mass from the things that you have observed and reserving it and reassigning it to things that you have not observed in your sample. And one classical approach for performance smoothing is to simply add a constant value to all the observation counts that you have. So you just pretend that everything that is out there, you have seen it slightly more often than you have it in your real index. So this parameter lambda, you just add it to all the patterns, you sum up the patterns, and you will get a slightly increased also total number of observations. And now with this, you can uh, build a distribution which is using a kind of adjusted relative frequencies. Effectively what happens is you really take away a tiny little bit of probability mass from your observed patterns and reassign it to this new unobserved pattern. And in this way you can overcome the zero probabilities. So the question is how to choose this parameter lambda. Um, Actually, you're free to choose it as you want. This kind of smoothing is called Lidstone smoothing, 
And if you look up, up in literature, lit stone smoothing is actually a generalization of a much older technique, and that is called Laplace smoothing, where the value of lambda is set to 1. And these are the two kinds of smoothing, these classical smoothing, that I am considering also in this paper. So now let's take a look at actual data. Let's take a look how the sampling and the smoothing techniques perform. For this purpose, I needed a data set, and I have taken some data from the Dynamic Link Data Observatory. The Dynamic Link Data Observatory is providing weekly snapshots of always the same data. It's around 60 million triples in the core data set that they have. Um, and they're updating it every week. Now here we don't need this the dynamics of the data, so I just picked the first snapshot. And the reason I chose this data set is because it has been very carefully designed to be representative for the linked data cloud. And so I've got a nice data set which as a size I can still perfectly manage and handle and, and easily work with. And still I think that it is quite good and reliable representative data. Now with this data set I did several things. First of all, I have sampled it. I've used all the different uh, sampling strategies, so triple-based sampling, subject-based sampling, and the context-based sampling, and also different sampling rates. So I took between 5% and 90% samples um, of the full data set. With all these samples, different techniques, different rates, I went through all the smoothing techniques. So the Laplace smoothing, the Lidstone smoothing with lambda equals 0 0.5, 0 0.1, and 0 0.01, and then I compared them and that how close were the distributions that I obtained to the distribution of the full data set. And to be sure that I have not been ha having an unlucky hand in, in, in the sampling, in the random sampling process, I have iterated over this whole process 10 times, and then I have built average values. So what I'm presenting here are really averages, aggregated averages of the quality of all the 10 iterations for all these combinations. So, well, one question I still have to address is how do you actually compare distributions? Assume you have got a distribution P and a distribution Q, and you want to know how close are they to each other. Well, there are information theoretic measures out there for comparing distributions. One of them is the cross entropy. Now, if you can think of entropy as, let's say, the ex expected length in bits that you get for an optimal compression scheme, schema if you know the true distribution of the data, then cross entropy is, well, the length of the, the expected length of the compression that you get if you don't really know the true distribution but just some approximation. So what you get here is, given that the entropy is the optimal compression, you get something that is slightly higher as a value than the entropy. And that is actually used for the real metric that we're using here, that is the callback leibler divergence. And that is giving you basically the overhead in bits that you would have in a compression scheme that is not knowing the true distribution of the data. What does that mean for our purpose here? If we have two distributions that are very close to each other, we will get a very small callback leibler divergence, small value. If we have the perfect uh, estimation we get a value of zero. If the two distributions become more and more different, the callback leibler divergence will grow in value, it will become higher. So for the experiment, just to explain you how the things are going to look now, in the, in the plots that I'm going to show you, we have our full data set of 100% of all the triples and then the samples going down 90%, down to 30, 20, 10, and 5%. I use all these samples and the multiple iterations to construct indices and to estimate my distributions. And now I have these distributions, I use different smoothing techniques, and then I can compare each distribution of a sample with a full distribution. So I can take, for example, the 90% distribution and I can look what's the callback leibler divergence for estimating the distribution of the full data set. And I can go on like this with all the samples that I have, and I will obtain a curve that will probably look like the one that I have there, that the smaller the sample size becomes, the higher is the deviation, the higher is the callback leibler divergence. So let's take a look at the real data and how things have evolved. I'm first looking at the impact of the sampling strategies. So what is the pattern that I am looking at? I am looking at the predicates, distribution of the predicates, and you see 
three curves for the three sampling strategies based on context, based on the triples, based on the subjects. And first thing we notice is that the line for the subject and the triple based sampling is very, very low. It's close to the x axis and hardly visible. So this means that here we have a very, very good approximation of the distribution, even down to sampling rates of 5% of the full data set. So here we get high quality estimates of the distributions. Context based sampling is not performing as good. And that might simply be because if you pick particular contexts, then partic picking also data from a particular domain, the way how the people have modeled the data, and then you will not just cover all possible combinations. But still the values are relatively good. You have a kalbach leibler divergence of less than one even for 5% of uh, sampling ratio. When we're looking at the distribution of the RDF class types, things don't look as good anymore for the context-based sampling. Here we see higher values immediately. Um, an explanation could be that most likely the RDF class types are even more specific to the data sources than the predicates. Predicates might be reused and used more uniformly across different data sources. But also here we see that the triple-based and the subject-based sampling are very, doing very, very fine. You've got very low values of kalbach leibler divergence, so a very good approximation of the distributions. When we're looking at more complex things like the property set, so which predicates are used in combination to describe one particular entity, we're observing one interesting thing. Context is still performing quite okay. Subject-based sampling is still performing very well. But the triple-based sampling is actually performing not that good. The reason is, if you're splitting up the data and sampling the data based on the triples, you will not get consistent descriptions for each single entity. And this is going to basically break up all these property sets and this will not give you a very reliable distribution of how these combinations are actually used. There's something similar even so to a lesser, lower extent when you're looking at the typesets. Here the triple-based sampling is again a bit better than the context-based sampling, but still far off from the subject-based sampling. The reason that it is better than the property-based sampling could simply be that there are just less types and less type combinations out there, and so you might still be quite lucky and, and get the right combination of types, at least for the distributions in the sampling based on triples. I have skipped the extended characteristic sets here, um, I can tell you they look very similar as a result to the, the, the property sets, the results are given in the paper. So now let's just take a last look at the impact of smoothing. And now here I have picked up just some particular examples. So here we are looking at the distribution of the predicates and we're using context-based sampling. And what you can see is that for all the smoothing that we have techniques that we have used here, so Laplace and Lidstone with different settings, basically there is no visible difference in kalbach leibler divergence. Even if we are changing to the best performing sampling on the predicate distribution that was the triple-based sampling, you see that still the values are very close to each other. Please mind that here the resolution on the y-axis is different and that might be also the reason why you see small, small differences between the smoothing techniques, but they're really negligible. When we're looking at different structures, so the extended characteristic sets, for example, there we're observing larger differences when it comes to smoothing. And one thing that you can see here is that the Laplace smoothing, in this case, performs better than the Lidstone smoothing. And here, the differences are actually also quite large between the individual lines, because again, here we have a different resolution on the y-axis. If we take a different kind of sampling, subject-based sampling for the extended characteristic sets, then the order of the smoothing techniques is just the opposite way around. Now, Laplace smoothing is performing worst, and the Lidstone smoothing is actually performing better. In general, we can still say that the quality here is so much better that here the resolution is again much smaller, so the overall difference here for the smoothing techniques can be considered negligible. Okay, to just wrap up and summarize quickly, so what we have done here with this paper is we have actually provided a baseline for future 
investigations and how to do sampling and smoothing on linked data. We have observed that there is actually quite little difference between these classical smoothing techniques that were covered. And there are a few things that we can even be drawn directly as conclusion also for applications. So we can say that the context-based sampling is still providing quite acceptable quality for most of the patterns that we have considered. And it is also good because this is a quite realistic scenario how you would actually implement sampling on the linked data cloud. Because you can easily go out there and just fetch all the data that one context, one data source is providing and in this way accumulate your, your subset of the linked data cloud and use that for estimating distributions. The other samplings, for in particular the subject-based sampling, they are very good in uh, getting you perfect, good estimations of the distribution. And they could be used if you're providing a void description with a few examples for your own data set. And there you have control over how the, the sampling is done. And that might be um, the right thing how to present the samples there. Anyway, what's left is future work. And as we have seen the sampling techniques, um, they still have leave quite some space for improvements. So the thing that I'm going to work on in the future is definitely working on smarter smoothing techniques. So uh, a few ideas here is to take approaches from the field of language modeling or directly develop smoothing techniques for linked data. But that's it for now. So thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, you will also catch me by email. Thank you.